Good morning and welcome everyone to Calvary. I think I'm a little loud here, just a tad. Um, so, good to see you all today and also want to welcome all those who are uh, streaming in uh, on your device. So, glad to have you joining us this way. I'm Pastor Dennis Preston uh, and Pastor Aaron Bovendam will be preaching today. Also want to thank our musicians, Jack and LaVon Bjork, and also Tracy Beeger, and the others that are assisting with worship today. Thank you. Today's All Saints Day. All Saints Day celebrates the baptized people of God, living and dead, who make up the body of Christ. So that'd be all of us. We are the body of Christ. So during worship, we'll have a time to both to celebrate those who have been baptized into our community of faith this past year, and also those who have died uh, from our community faith since our last All Saints celebration. Also today, the Calvary Annual Meeting is after the second service, so please come and uh, we'll have everyone register so we have a quorum. Uh, you can attend either in the parking lot or the fellowship hall. In the parking lot, you'll be listening using a radio transmitter, and uh, the voice should be clear through the, the radio. Uh, you can be in the first rows of the parking lot out here or right in the street by the church, or it should work on the, the side over here too. Uh, and then uh, the agenda includes electing new ministry leaders for 2021, uh, there's reports, and then there's two other agenda items. Um, exciting, coming up November 15th will be Pastor Aaron's installation, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, Bishop Bill Tesh will be coming uh, from our synod to install Pastor Aaron, and uh, he'll be preaching at both services. Uh, the installation will be at the second service on November 15th. Offering containers are available as you leave uh, on the stands on either side there. Also, all the electronic uh, options are there. Thank you so much for your generosity. And as is the usual practice, Holy Communion will be celebrated as part of the service today. Uh, those of you who are here, you've received a cup of grape juice and a wafer uh, when you came into the sanctuary. Uh, we'll save those and share in communion later in the service. And for those who are watching the service on the live stream, stream, you can join with us in communion, provided you have wine or grape juice and bread or crackers available. Uh, and if not, plan ahead for next week. So we'll begin with our, our music. What do you want? What have you done? What do you need? Do you want to be free? Are you losing the battle? The battle with sin? Well, the master is waiting, waiting to come in. Cause if there's an answer, it's easy to find Drop down to your heart And rest there a while Right there in the silence Beneath all the din You know the Master is waiting Waiting to come in that you're hearing 
that's your personal call don't try to resist it don't try to defend the master The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, children's time. And today, you might notice that we have some different cloths up here, some tablecloths, the fancy words, pyramids. But did anyone notice the color change from last week? So we have the ones that we put up for Christmas and Easter up today because today is a very special day in the church. It's one of my favorite Sundays of the whole year. It's All Saints Sunday. And so we are going to light candles over here later today in this cross. And we light them to remember all those loved ones from our church who have died this past year. And we call them saints. Now as we think about these people, they were people who lived out their faith, who were given God's gifts and talents, and they shared those with the people around us. But were they perfect? Any one of them, were they perfect? No, no, they weren't. What do you think? Were they perfect? You think so? They might have seemed perfect to you, huh? Yeah, sometimes they seem perfect, but they probably had mistakes and failings like every single one of us. That tells us that being a saint is not about what we do, but it's about what God has done for us. We trust that in our baptism, if you've been baptized, or you will be one day, in our baptism we are marked with the cross of Christ forever, and we are claimed as God's own, and we are made holy by God. That doesn't mean we always live perfectly, because we live in this broken world, we make mistakes and we have failings, but we also trust that deeper than all of that, we are claimed as God's own and made a saint, made holy with God. So today we also celebrate that, and we're going to also light candles for all those who were baptized this past year. And so we're excited to do that and to get to see in those people's lives the gifts and talents that God had given each one of them and the ways they are going to live that out in the years ahead. So we're grateful for that. So this next week, one thing you might do is you could go home and light a candle for someone you know that you love who has died and you want to remember them. So you can have an adult in your home light that candle today, and you can remember and give thanks to God for them. Or if you've been baptized, maybe you go home and you find your baptismal candle that you might have been given, or you look up your baptism date, and you give thanks to God for that date. Or one more thing you could try is you could write a thank you note to a saint that you know, to someone who lives out their faith, and just thank them for the ways that they have encouraged you in yours. Let's pray. We thank you, God, for this day. Help us to be grateful for all that you do in our lives and the lives around us, and help us to live out our holiness by showing love and kindness to the people around us. In your name we pray. Amen. 
So we have Revelation up there, and I'll have you keep it up there. We're going to get to that in a few moments. This is one of the readings that was set for today, All Saints Day. And as we drop down in the book of Revelation, it might be helpful to have a little background. So the book of Revelation, some of you may already know this, but it was written to seven different churches. And these churches were dealing with different issues. Some of them were facing persecution. Life was extremely difficult. And they were trying to remain faithful. And so you have these visions in Revelation of promise and hope to encourage them to keep going. Then one other issue that some churches were dealing with wasn't that life was so good, or so bad, but that life was so good. One of my dear teachers, Craig Kester, talked about this. They were dealing with life being too comfortable. So they had just enough faith to feel good about life, but not enough to really move them to be faithful, to move them to live and fully follow Jesus Christ. And so th these churches needed maybe a different message. One... Uh, that maybe might encourage them in a stronger way. Come on, live faithfully here. You need to be motivated to live faithfully. And so Revelation is, is trying to span this wide variety of experiences people are going through. And so it cycles through these visions, visions of promise and hope, and then there's these threatening visions that are challenging. And thus the book of Revelation and this passage that we're going to read today, it speaks really to all times in all places. It speaks to us today. We are going to read from chapter 7, and at this point in the story, John has just seen several visions basically of mass destruction. There have been six seals opened, six horrible threats, and there's one more that is to be opened. So what, the, what, he's, ex, what he's seen is people experiencing bad thing after bad thing after bad thing, and he witnesses the people of the earth throw up their hands basically and cry out in despair, who can stand? In the face of all this bad stuff that we're witnessing, who can stand? At this point, you'd expect the next seal to be opened, but there's this break, and he witnesses the angels holding back all these hurts. And then John hears a number. So the question is, who can stand? And he hears this number, 144,000 from the tribes of Israel, that these are people who are sealed, they go back to God's promises from long ago. So John hears this number, 144,000 sealed, saved. Now some interpreters have looked at that and clung to that number and tried to limit it and say, oh, it's only a, a small group from a, a certain group of people that are going to be saved and sealed by God. John hears that number, but when he looks, this is what he sees. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. And what are they doing? Who can stand? They are standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Be to God. 
What John sees is God's grace flowing beyond what we humans think is possible, beyond the limits that we set. John sees a God who is with us not only in the joys of life, but also in the deep hurts, guiding and sheltering and wiping tears from our eyes. As we look back at the threats that lead up to this vision, we here in 2020 might find ourselves right there, seeing all that's wrong, feeling like we're facing many threats in our world or in our lives. We might feel those people's despair in that vision and cry out, who can stand? Or as one scholar put a spin on it, who can stand it? If we jump back to today, we are two days from a very anxious election. And those who support each party are certain that if the opposition wins, it's going to be like the end of the world. It's going to be really bad. We are living through a pandemic where over 200,000 people have died from COVID in our nation alone. And I have people close to me in my own family who are fighting for their lives, first because of cancer, and now they are fighting against COVID. We have seen protests, deep hurt and concern in our nation like we have not seen in decades and people unjustly killed again and again and again because of the color of their skin. Who can stand it? And then here we arrive on All Saints Day, and some of us have had deep personal loss as we remember loved ones with much love and grief. And it doesn't quite make sense. Who can stand it? As I was looking at notes, some old notes that I had written long ago, I was reminded with so much gratitude of a dear saint that I had known. Several years ago, we were talking, and he was going through a time of grief. And I can still hear him say this as he reflected on his own grief. He said, Well, God never said it would be easy. He just said he'd be with us. It can be hard to see and trust that especially when it seems like so many ordeals we see going on or that we experience don't make a lot of sense. When so many just seem to be this random result of living in a broken world because we are not yet brought into the end of Revelation when God will bring about that new creation for us and this world. That dear saint said, God said it would never be easy. God just said he'd be with us. And to hear that kind of faith from someone who's going through his own ordeal, that is something that encourages my faith and might encourage each of our own. I was reading through our council report for the annual meeting today, and someone had written this there, that God sends us good people to guide and travel with us on the journey. Sometimes you are God's sign that Christ is there that there is one there for us who is sheltering us and shepherding us. And sometimes that friend who is sitting with us in our sadness, sometimes that friend is our God at work through them, wiping tears from our eyes. And so we keep moving forward, walking in the promise of a God who is with us, who helps us to stand. And not just us, but if we look back at that vision from Revelation, it's people from every tribe and nation and language, a people so great no one can count how many there are who God longs to bring into God's abundant grace. And if that is God's vision, God's dream for this world, then that also is the mission of the church today, that God clearly lays out God's hope for us here so that we seek to live it out with the Holy Spirit's help as best we can that we seek to find ways to welcome and work for justice for people of every tribe and nation and language, no matter what, because that's God's vision, God's hope. It's the way that you have opened up your space here to get food on the weekends for children through our backpack program. As I read through the reports, it's the way that the quilters have sent so many quilts to so many different places of need. Or it's how a couple of groups in our church have worked to help bring children in education in other countries across this world. Or how I have seen and witnessed just in the last month 
how you reach out when someone in this faith community is having a hard time. Like the saints in this vision from Revelation who are praising God and singing, we too thank God for who God is for us. And then we share Jesus, we help others. For now, here we are still in 2020 for two more months. This pandemic is not yet done and we don't know what's gonna happen on election day or in the days that follow. But before we face whatever is ahead, we are promised a God who shelters us and guides us. We are promised a time that when all the things that separate and divide us, they are gone and we stand together before our God in peace. We hang on to this promised future, God's great dream for us in this world, and by the Holy Spirit's help and presence, we have the power to stand, to face it, and to help others stand it in the meantime. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we now get to celebrate all the saints, and so I invite Shar to come forward as she reads the names of those who were baptized this past year. And Sue Delaney pointed out this is a great year to do that because so many had to happen during the summer in yards and we didn't get to celebrate it as a faith community. And so we get to do that now. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise and thank you for each of these people who were baptized this past year. We give you thanks for your work in their lives, and we ask that you continue to deepen their relationship with you in all the years ahead. Help them to be supported by and to be a support to this community of faith and others in this world. Baptized into you, we lift up to you the whole of our lives. Guide us to love you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to live in ways that show love to our neighbors, whoever those neighbors may be. Guide us to be caretakers of your creation for this and future generations, and move us as your church to be a sign of your blessing and grace in this world. We pray that you would help leaders of countries, communities, businesses, and homes to be faithful in their service and to look out for the good of all. And we especially pray for your guidance and peace this election day. We hold in prayer those struggling in any way. Bring your healing power into the lives of those living in fear of wildfires, those living through natural disasters, those facing human violence, 
and those living with illness in body, mind, or spirit. Today, we especially hold in prayer all those on our prayer list and all those we now name silently or aloud. Bring each of them your healing and peace. In your name we pray. Amen. We now get to remember and celebrate those who have died in the faith and the way they have touched our lives with theirs. I invite Lee to come forward. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for all those who have gone ahead of us, who have been examples for us of God's love at work in this world. Help us to trust that we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses in the faith. We praise and thank you for those we have named and for those who have remained unnamed. Who have helped to show us life in Christ and shaped our lives with theirs. In your name we pray. Amen. This is that time in the service when we would normally take the offering. So again, I want to thank you so much for your generosity that continues to make ministry happen through Calvary and around the world. 
thank you so much. Also in announcements, I forgot to mention uh, Russell Bunker. Uh, Russell had surgery, uh, hip surgery this past week, and uh, he's still in the hospital in Fargo, hoping to come home today. So we'll hope that happens for Russ. So at this time, we, we prepare for Holy Communion. Please stand as we pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our servant and sovereign. Amen. So please do not open your communion cups until after the Lord's Prayer. Uh, this is our time of Holy Communion. And so as I speak the words of institution, I'll ask you to raise your cup and then lower it as we, say, uh, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll partake together of communion. So please lift your grape juice and wafer, wafer now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So at this time, you may carefully open that top layer on your uh, your, your wafer, uh, and you may be seated before we do all this. Um, also, um, be very careful when you open the grape juice. Don't squeeze. Uh, it's a little hard to get off. And then, as we partake in Holy Communion, please hear these words spoken to you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey 
strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. So receive the, the blessing uh, from Romans. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens, strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and to be glad. So the blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. And also the, the, um, the dismiss, no, we have a prelude? No, it's dismissal at this point. So, so beloved, beloved in God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace, serve the Lord.